Hey guys, it's Cindy with a pacemaker. A couple days ago, I posted a video of me at the cardiologist's office before they interrogated my pacemaker. And today, I wanted to talk a little bit about the pacemaker report card that I get after that appointment. It's not standard for them to give you a copy of this report, but I asked for it and I got it. And if you follow me, you know that I'm a big advocate of owning your health. Nobody is going to care more about how well you feel in your quality of life than you. So it is critical that you take an active role in understanding your diagnosis and your conditions and the tests that you're having and understanding the test results. So in the spirit of that, I wanted to go over a couple of things that I like to look at after my pacemaker evaluation. So I said, I called it an interrogation and it sounds pretty intense, like get arrested and then interrogated and it's definitely not that intense. You saw the machine that I was hooked up to and that machine runs my pacemaker through a series of tests so it raises my heart rate and lowers my heart rate and then runs tests on the leads which are the wires between my heart and the pacemaker. And then it prints out some data, some of it's historical that's been stored on my pacemaker about the last six months of my life and then some of it is information about the tests that they just run. And you call that interrogating your pacemaker. The most important information that you can get from your pacemaker interrogation evaluation document would be the battery status. And this gives me a range. It says that I have between seven and a half and 11 years left on my battery. And it's estimating that I will need to have it changed in nine and a half years, which is a win. I like that, nine and a half years. The next thing I look at is the parameter summary, which tells me my upper and lower limits. This is important to me because I have bradycardia, which means that my heart rate is very low, which is why I have a pacemaker. When I sit down or lie down, my heart rate wants to drop to 20 or 30 beats per minute, which is not safe. So my pacemaker turns on and I can feel that. Not everybody feels their pacemaker turn on, but I do. It doesn't hurt, but it's not normal and it doesn't feel right. So I know that my lower limit of my pacemaker is 60. So if I feel my pacemaker and I'm concerned that something's wrong, I can take my pulse and if it's above or at 60, I know that what I'm feeling is my pacemaker working and that is a good thing. If you don't have a pacemaker and you've never felt your pacemaker adjust your heart rate, you may not understand the value of knowing your lower limit. But if you have a pacemaker, you know what I'm talking about. The next thing that I like to look at is this cool histogram of my atrial and ventricular leads. I have two wires that go into my heart and they both go into different chambers. And I know that in my ventricle, my pacemaker paces my heart rate 100% of the time. So I can see that in this chart and I can see in my atrium it paces me like 45% of the time. The rest of the information on here is pretty much over my head. It has historical data that they use as benchmarks, sensitivity settings, voltage settings, stuff like that. And there you have it. That's the information that I like to get off of my pacemaker report. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And follow me at my links below, Cindy Heigl on Instagram or in a heartbeatbook.com for my blog and in a heartbeat book on Facebook. I'm not a medical professional and I'm not giving medical advice.